Good afternoon. Recently, the Netherlands has been gaining a lot of internet popularity as a result of its high-quality urban planning. But as we all know, a city, and indeed country, is only as good as its transport network. Naturally, I tend to focus on the train-shaped part of this equation, so I went to the Low Countries themselves to investigate whether the Dutch rail network is really something to aspire to, or is it just massively overrated? The Dutch railway network is rather old, with the first line being constructed in 1839 between Amsterdam and Haarlem. The network grew rapidly, and by the early 1900s, passenger numbers had got so high that the existing infrastructure was simply unable to cope. The obvious next step, widening existing lines, was impossible in many cases due to the highly urbanised nature of where the lines ran through, leaving only the fledgling technology of electrification as a viable option. This meant trains could accelerate faster and operate more consistently, meaning more trains could run in the same amount of time. The first electrification project was completed in 1908, and it was a remarkable success. As a result, plans later formulated to electrify the entire Dutch railway network by 1958. But it was 1938 that went down in history. On the 15th of May, passengers awoke to a radically different rail network to the one that they travelled on just a day before. During the night, the overhead wires were turned on across most main lines in the central Netherlands, a new fleet of state-of-the-art electric multiple units, known as MAT-36s, were introduced all at once, replacing previous designs of train. And perhaps most noticeably, the entire timetable was rewritten. It featured regular departures from every station at the same time every hour, and of course multiple times an hour at larger stations. Whilst it seems obvious now, this was a revolutionary idea at the time, and meant travelling by train was far more convenient than it had been before. Connections are also synchronised. If you had to change trains, the next one will be waiting there for you. Nederlandse Spoorwege, or NS, the Dutch state railway company, called it strict timetabling, but it has come more to be known as clockface scheduling or synchronised timetables. Obviously, the public, government and NS themselves are eager to electrify more. But then World War II happened. On the 10th of May 1940, the German army began the invasion of the Netherlands. The Dutch army fought back, but was simply incapable of providing any meaningful resistance. As a result, the country quickly surrendered. The occupation was difficult, and when NS workers refused to collaborate with the Nazi regime, it responded by restricting food imports, leading to the hunger winter of 1944 and 1945, in which thousands of people starved to death. NS wasn't completely innocent, however. In the years leading up to the war, the Netherlands acted as a sort of refuge for people being persecuted by the Nazis in other areas in Europe, most notably Jewish people. This, combined with the country's already small nature, meant it was comparatively easy for the Nazis to round up people and distribute them onwards to death camps. Of course, the NS played a large part in transporting them. All in all, over 70% of Dutch Jews were killed during the Holocaust, one of the worst death tolls in Europe. Eventually, in 1945, liberation came, and the NS was vital for rebuilding the Netherlands. Unlike in much of Europe, there weren't many cuts in the 1960s, with the railways receiving large amounts of state subsidy, as they were seen as essential. NS continued as a state-funded organisation for some time, until 1998, when the government decided that it should become a commercial venture, with it aiming to be profitable and require no external support. However, performance plummeted, so the changes were quickly reversed. The replacement system is still in use today, and involves NS operating the main lines, with smaller branch services being franchised out to private companies. Some of these names will be familiar to the British audience. Arriva in particular operates a large network in Limburg in the south. That's not the limit of Arriva's control, though. They also run the buses in Limburg, as well as the hire bikes and even cars. It's also worth noting that the majority of buses in Lemberg, and indeed much of the Netherlands, are operated by electric buses. They use pantographs which charge up the buses when they're at a station. It's very clever. But the best thing is how you can use one card to pay for all public transport in the Netherlands. Like an Oyster card, but nationwide. It's called the OV chip card, and is very convenient. But it's not seamlessly integrated. For example, if you want to board an Arriva train, you have to tap your OV chip card on the NS reader first, and then the Arriva one, and vice versa for NS travel. 
Is it really beyond the wit of man to calculate who should get the fare based on the route you take, rather than which reader you tapped on with? Obviously not. You can do it with an Oyster card, and basically any other travel card in the world. However, that's a minor inconvenience, and it's difficult to overstate just how fantastic a nationwide chip card is. I do think they could improve the design of the physical cards, though. They're a little bit ugly. If you don't have an OV chip card, though, it's fine. You can always buy a ticket at a machine or a ticket office at the larger stations. The UI of the former is nice and intuitive, and the decor in the latter is superb, very inviting. Stations are, of course, much more than just their ticket purchasing facilities, and Dutch stations don't fail at other factors either. They're impeccably clean, and there are plenty of toilets, benches, and staff, and the architecture is either modern or respectful to the past. Dutch stations are on the whole incredibly pleasant. It's very easy to spend a long time sitting on one, just watching the world go by. Of course, that's not what most people actually do though, so what if you want to get to your platform? Well, the stations are laid out exquisitely. There's a real feeling of effortless high quality design. A lot of attention appears to be focused on accessibility, which is fantastic, and most major stations are entirely step free. The wayfinding also isn't half bad. In particular, the passenger information screens are exceptional. They present all the information required in a clean and concise way, and also throw in loads of stuff you don't find elsewhere without it really cluttering up the displays. They are truly impressive after a moment's thought. This ease of use extends beyond just the passenger information, with even the service patterns being simple and easy to understand. NS services are divided into two categories. Intercity, which is for faster, limited stop workings, and Sprinter, which is for stopping trains serving local communities. It's a welcome bit of simplicity, and is much easier to use than the infinitely complicated various different calling and service patterns of British trains. However, it sort of relies on a simplified network design, something that you couldn't really do in Britain without causing major bottlenecking and overcrowding issues. NS appears to operate almost as a hub-and-spoke system, with main lines ferrying people on intercity trains and sprinters distributing them locally. This works very well, actually. The trains are frequent enough that changing isn't that much of an issue, as I discussed previously. However, funneling people onto certain routes is not really what we want to be doing on the heavily congested British rail network. Boarding a sprinter train is just as simple as their operations. They're all equipped with level boarding, which is fantastic for people in wheelchairs, and the interiors are bright and modern, if a little clinical. The seats generally used appear to be Fanes and Sophia's, which, amazingly, are the same seats used on intercity trains in the UK. Dutch intercity trains tend to use more comfortable seating, and the layout is designed to be more appropriate for longer distance journeys. However, I don't actually think it succeeds in this regard. The interiors broadly come off as Spartan, and with no carpets or tables in the bays of four, they feel more like a commuter train than an intercity one. I appreciate that their journey times aren't exactly long. The Netherlands is a tiny country after all. But even still, trains that travel similar lengths in the UK, for example, are much more thoughtfully decorated. These problems are particularly prevalent on the Koplapa, these uh, interesting looking trains, though I can probably forgive the Verm. Is that how you say it? Double deckers. They're amazing to travel on. The ride quality is superb, you feel like you're gliding along. However, there is one thing that's really annoying about Dutch trains. The incredibly antiquated signalling system means trains cannot exceed 140 km an hour, or about 85 miles an hour. On a double-decker intercity train, this feels painfully sluggish. There are also cleanliness issues. Whilst the stations are spotless and the trains are well maintained, there's an abundance of litter on board despite the provision of small bins at every seat. Things such as banana peels and sandwich packaging are common. To make matters worse, the lack of carpet really shows up dirt, and graffiti is abundant, particularly in the toilets. I do wonder if this lack of respect for rolling stock is perhaps influenced by their Spartan decoration. It's just a theory, but if the trains are a little more luxurious, then perhaps there'd be less antisocial behaviour. Nonetheless, there are still many good things about the interior layout. I think it's a good idea that first class is included on all trains. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, of course, but it's a nice way for the railway to increase revenue whilst also improving the satisfaction of passengers who want first class, and having the ability to choose a compartment in first is a fantastic draw. Oh, and I thought I wouldn't really like the faux leather covering on all NS seats, but actually I rather do. It's quite comfortable and isn't very slippery. 
yet it makes things easy to clean. Let's say you've had enough of the Netherlands though and want to get out to a different country. Well, high-speed services to Belgium, Germany and France are operated by TELUS, a joint Dutch, French and Belgian operation. TELUS is great, the seats are very uncomfortable and the service is impeccable. However, they're incredibly overpriced. To save money, you could take NS's Intercity Direct that runs from Amsterdam to Brussels, but it's not exactly a premium level service. They use incredibly old trains which certainly leave a lot to be desired. However, they are being replaced by the Intercity New Generation sets, which do look impressive. Oh, and of course, you can go to London on a Eurostar if you so wish. Or Germany if DB decide to turn up. For all its faults, though, I actually really like the Dutch Rail Network, and probably prefer it to the British one. You get a genuine feel that the railway is there to help you, rather than catch you out for a very slight fare miscalculation, or make you miss your connecting train as the timings are one minute too late. There's just less of this with NS. It feels like a public service, as it should be. Granted, it's a very expensive public service, but at least the fares are consistent, and you get what you pay for. Travelling with NS is very pleasant. But what could be done to improve the rail network of the Netherlands? Well, first and foremost, I think the comfort of trains needs to be addressed. Tables should be provided at base of four, and carpet should be applied on intercity trains. Dynamic lighting would also help improve interior ambience, and therefore, hopefully, produce the desired reductions in antisocial behaviour. Fares could do with being a little lower as well. However, this would require more government subsidy. To be a bit more radical, I think a possible merger between NS and SNCB should be looked at. They both share a lot in common, yet interworking between Belgium and the Netherlands is diabolical. A forced collaboration would really help improve that. Though, obviously, you don't need a merger for that to happen. Overall, though, whilst NS is far from a perfect railway, the Netherlands really excels at turning just rails into a rail network. The integration is a pleasure to witness whether it's between trains or with other forms of transport. The underground bicycle garages, extensive cycling infrastructure, bus stations linked with their railway equivalents, and combined fares between all forms of transport. It all just works. Getting around is so easy in the Netherlands. There's a level of convenience and pleasure you don't get anywhere else. But it does make one think. There are many aspects in which the British rail network outperforms the Dutch one, and the areas where it doesn't could, with a lot of work of course, be improved. So if we had the willpower, and didn't forget about local transport, then we'd certainly be onto something.